What's up guys, Big D Wiz here with another amp from the Chinese Mini Amp Invasion. This one based off the TPA 3118D2 chip. Let's check it out and see what it's all about. Alright guys, it's quite amazing. This amplifier is available for around $12 off eBay. Check the video description for a link where you can pick one of these up. But it's just a simple 2.1 channel amplifier rated at 30 by 2 and 60 by 1. And here's what it looks like. There's three potentiometers for adjustments. There's RCA inputs. There are three speaker outputs. And also there's the two chips you can see between the caps. And here are the terminals that I like. These are the green ones that would, which will accept 16 gauge speaker wires and it has a barrel terminal for the uh, power. Again, here's the speaker terminal, very nice, I like these. The bottom of the amp just has some plastic standoffs and some nice solder work. And here's a real up close picture of the TPA 3118D2 chip. Now I'm not sure if these are legit or if these are fakes, but here's the, Texas Instruments page where they talk about it and it's rated 30 by 2 at 8 ohms. I've also been warned that these Sanyo caps may be fakes. <laughs> 50 volts, 470 microfarad caps. And again, the layout of the amplifier, you can see here the three potentiometers at the bottom for the volume, the base volume, and the base frequency. On the left side there is a input as well to the RCAs that you can use. And then the speaker leads are at the back. And here, showing the amp all hooked up, the way it looks when you've got it connected. Now there's one thing you'll notice right here, if you look at the RCAs and look at the volume, look how close they are, it makes it really difficult to adjust the volume. But anyway, let's uh, first try it out and see how it sounds with some bookshelf speakers and a small subwoofer. Alright, been jamming out here for, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. We're going to check out the temperature of the chips. That's the sub channel. Turn 12 degrees. degrees. And the front channel is 105, 107. So not too bad. They could probably still stand heat sinks but they're not that hot to the touch so maybe not because I was playing it really loud jamming out to some YouTube tunes so you guys could hear it too I know the sound quality is not going to come through YouTube because it's going to be recompressed and everything but anyway I can just tell you it sounds pretty dang good so I'm impressed with this little amp All right guys, so here's the part a lot of you want to see is the dyno test to find out how much this amplifier can actually put out wattage wise. Before we talk about that, I wanted to talk about my little resistor load here that I built quite a while back. 
I'll link in the video description to the old video. You can see how to make one of these yourselves. But each one of these resistors is 50 watts and gives a 200 watt at 8 ohm load for each of the four banks. So I'm gonna be using this to load down the front channels and also the sub channel so I can make sure that all the channels are loaded down when I test the amplifier. All right, this is eight ohms, it's the front channels, and we're doing one kilohertz. Certified at eight ohms. Notice the distortion light comes on immediately. Before I even get the one kilohertz to tech, I don't get any, won't measure. Will not measure at 1% THD. All right, initially when I was noticing the issues with distortion, this amplifier, I thought it could be related to this voltage booster I got off of eBay. I was actually using a 12 volt lead acid battery and using this to boost up the voltage up to 24 so I could test the amp. So what would happen is when I would connect it up, the distortion would just go peg the meter all the way to the right. So then I thought, well, I'll just buy a couple of these 12 volt, 12 amp per hour batteries and we'll try it that way. So all the tests here are done at 24 volts, actually just over 24 volts, so like 25.3 volts. But then with some further investigation, what I found is the head unit, when I had it on volume number 25, I was at 0.73 volts input. I was getting a clean sine wave. Check out the O-scope here. See how the sine wave is nice and clean. Now, if I bump this volume up just one tick, to number 26, which is gonna show here, that's 0.93 volts RMS input. Again, this is through the RCA lead. You're gonna see, notice the bottom here, look at that. It shows the clipping on the bottom of the waveform. So there's definitely some issue and it shows it on the amp dyno too. That explains why I was showing distortion right off the bat with this amplifier. But it did have something to do with the amplifier as well and it's class D design. I mean, it's $12. <laughs> what do we expect here? But we did bump the volume down since we noticed that to 25 and that's how we did the test. Just kind of wanted to let you guys know that's what's going on when you see the uh, distortion meter come on, distortion light. All the tests I'm gonna show here are gonna be at 25.6 volts. That's two 12 volt batteries in series. And first up, we're gonna do the front channels. And as shown below, the sub channels were actually loaded as well with that resistor bank that I showed you earlier. So all the channels were loaded down. So let's go uncertified eight ohms, one kilohertz. See what we get. Now the amp was rated 30 watts by two at eight ohms at 10% THD at 24 volts. So we're at clipping here and we're a little bit more than 24 volts, but you can see not bad right at rated. Now I didn't realize that the front channels weren't rated at four ohms, they're actually only rated at eight ohms. So I tried one kilohertz at four ohms with the front channels and check this out. Got 50 watts per channel. That's pretty crazy. Now again, at one kilohertz, we're not putting much load at all on the sub channel just because of the frequency we tested, but still pretty impressive. Now as a comparison, we did a 40 hertz test. Now, since the front channels on this amplifier are full range, they will play the 40 hertz tone in addition to the subwoofer playing it. So we expect to get a little bit less power than at one kilohertz. And you can see we did 37 watts per channel. Still pretty good. All right, this time we're gonna do the sub channel. We're gonna do it uncertified at four ohms. This is gonna take us up to where the amplifier clips. That's where the test will stop. And we're gonna do 40 hertz. Sixty-four watts, four ohms. Very nice. All right, this will probably give us our biggest numbers for this little 2.1 amplifier. 2 ohms, uncertified, 40 hertz, gonna take us up to clipping. 98 watts. <laughs> Crazy. I really don't expect these little chip amps to do very good dynamically, just because they don't have a lot of reserve. But let's try it anyway at 4 ohms, 40 hertz. 
62 watts. All right, two ohms dynamic burst. Is it possible we can maybe get over 100 watts on the sub channel? This little amp that's only rated to deliver 60 to the sub channel? One way to find out. So close, 96 watts. Still very impressive. <laughs> All right, we just finished testing the amp. Let's see if we can get a, whoa, that chip is pretty dang hot right there. That's the front channel chip. You can see we got as high as 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's check the other chip. This is the sub channel chip. 138 degrees. I bet those would benefit 139. I bet they would benefit from a heat sink. What do you think? All right, so here are the results of the TPA 3118D2. These are actually the 12 volt tests, which I did not show on the screen because the uh, video was already long enough. You can pause and check those out. Here are the 24 volt tests, and we got right at the rated. I mean, the amp actually did more than rated at the lower ohm loads. I didn't realize that it was rated 30 by two at eight ohms and 60 by one at four ohms, but that's where it was rated. But it actually did two ohms on the sub channel and four ohms on the front channels. So in buying all these amps for the Chinese mini amp invasion, I found that a lot of them didn't come with the knobs for the potentiometers. This one actually did, but I don't show them. But I like these different color ones. You can pick this whole pack up for around eight bucks on Amazon. I'll give you the link in the video description below. I really like these, that way it kind of gives you different colors so you know which knob you're adjusting. In addition to that, the heat sink, again, this amp did not have heat sink on the chips, and I don't see any reason why not to put that on the chip. So it has a 3M adhesive, and you can see here I put one on each chip, and I think this is dramatically gonna help the amp. I'm not sure because I haven't actually done any extensive testing with it yet, but um, still, I think it's not gonna hurt. And this little voltmeter is really slick. You can see it's got voltage, current, power, and energy. Check the video description. These are very inexpensive too and, and very nice for your project. So the TPA 3118, I've got the not so goods is what I call them. First up, the master volume location, which is right beside the RCAs, makes it really difficult to adjust. No Bluetooth and the input voltage was very finicky. It wanted less than a volt for sure. And the distortion of the Class D design, that's just inherent. This is a cheap amplifier, so not sure about the chip itself. Here are the chips. You know, we're not sure if these are valid or these are fakes. But anyway, amp sounds pretty good. And here's some of the positives I found about the amp. Small footprint, wide voltage power input range, 12 volts to 24 volts. It also has multiple inputs. It has RCAs that come with it, but it has a little header so you can add additional inputs. The idle current's very low, 0.19 amps, so you can run this a long time on batteries, no problem. The price versus performance, I mean, 2.1 amp for 12 bucks, I mean, that's pretty incredible. Sound quality is pretty cool. It's got three outputs, two for main speakers and one for subwoofer. So we didn't talk much about this little voltage booster. I'm gonna talk about this in a future video, but if you wanna check the video description, I have a link to it. It's Big D Wiz. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm out of here. All right, at a request of my buddy Hi-Fi Vega, he said I should show the temp of these new heat sinks that are on the chip. Before I got 155 degrees for the front channels, you can see the max I got this time was 157. That's really not a bad thing because it's pulling the heat away from the chip. On the sub channel, I actually got 139 before, so 127, 129 this time. So it actually does help out. So check out the heat sinks in the video description if you want to pick some up.